Welcome back to Matt's Workshop. Today we have a repair video for you, so stick around. In a recent video, you may have seen me using the Burke horizontal milling machine to cut some bevels for making some hand scrapers. Well, after using the machine for that project, I found that the gearbox would not shift to change speeds. The gearbox is a Lima four speed side shift using a standard H pattern. It sits between the electric motor and the milling spindle. Using the shop gantry crane, I lifted the gearbox off the machine and set it up on the workbench. First thing to do was drain the oil, of course. Then I removed the eight screws holding the cover plate to the underside of the gearbox case. Okay, inside the gearbox, I spotted the problem right away. The shifter arm should have a selector that pivots and engages the countershaft dog forks. This selector was broken off and laying in two pieces in the bottom of the gearbox. Here you can see the parts. The shift arm has a square drive to engage the selector. The selector is made of a stamped steel piece with a square hole and two round bosses facing opposite directions. While I don't know how this selector was originally made, I do suspect it was two stamped pieces that were welded together. At some point in this gearbox's life, it must have failed and the previous owner attempted to weld it back together. Unfortunately, these are the welds that have failed now and this is the situation I'm left with. After thinking over ways to re-weld the broken pieces, I decided to try and make a new part from scratch. I took some basic measurements from the broken pieces and drew up a new part as a 3D model in Autodesk Fusion 360. Here's a working drawing from Fusion. My plan was to mill this from solid O1 tool steel on the Shearline CNC milling machine. Well, after playing around with different milling tool paths, I determined that it would be difficult to fixture and machine accurately, so I changed my game plan, opting to fabricate the selector from three pieces of stock. I fully intended to use the CNC milling machine as much as possible, so I simplified the design and milled out the flat part from 3 16 by 1 inch flat stock I had left over from making the hand scrapers a couple of days ago. The shear line is not the most rigid machine, so I took light passes. After all, it's a CNC machine, so I just hit go and come back when the part is done. So I milled the part down to a water line, then I set up the part in the bigger bridge port and faced off the backside to free the part and bring it to the correct thickness. I did need to use a needle file to finish the square inside corners for the shifter arm to lock into. Over on the lathe, I sliced off two discs from a 5 8 inch rod of stress-proof steel. I also drilled and tapped the center of each disc to create a positive locating mechanism for the silver brazing yet to come. Now you should notice that I added three very small dimples using a center punch. Uh, these little dimples serve to create a very small gap for the flux and silver solder to ensure a good strong solid joint. I cleaned the parts and applied brazing flux to the steel surfaces as well as the brass locating screws and inside of the threaded holes. This is a borax-based white silver brazing flux. It's superior brand number 601. I get it from McMaster Car. With everything clean and fluxed, I lit the acetylene torch and applied heat until the flux ran clear. I then added 45% silver solder, Harris brand, until the joint filled. After cool down, I cleaned the part with a wire wheel, and this is the result. Okay, let's try that again. We're in neutral here. So, spin this. Nothing on the output shaft. So, we're on the first uh, bar here. So, we shift it. Oops. Shift it there. We've got a. I call that a first gear, I guess. Actually, that's probably top gear. Here's the second one. to neutral, pull that out, shift it this way, high reduction, that's probably going to be first gear on that one, in a second, so yeah, that's the order, okay, so this, this is first gear, try to get it all in the frame, that's first gear, shift that over, Second gear. Engage that. Should be third gear. Oh, we gotta be in. Doesn't want to click 
can't. There we go. Third gear. Pretty high. And fourth gear. Now, they made this uh, gearbox in a few different ratios, but I think I looked it up a while ago. I'll try to attach those to the video. So this is made by uh, Lima Electric Motor Company from Lima, Ohio. The interesting thing is um, on the selector here, you can technically install it in four different locations, which makes, uh, that's the reason why uh, I had such a hard time getting the uh, shift selector in, installed. It, it took me about an hour um, the first time, and then once I took 10 thousandths off, 10 thousandths off the uh, actual little bosses, um, which is closer to what the original was. Uh, it went installed a lot easier, but it's still quite a pain just because of the uh, lack of space for your fingers to get in there to hold it. And there's, it's pretty much a sealed unit, except for this access port in the back. You can't really, I mean, you take that out, that doesn't give you any access to the selector. But, um, so, it's interesting. So you got first, you know, second, uh, Actually, the first was out there. First, second, third, and fourth. And then neutral in the middle. You turn that and nothing on the output. So, it's an interesting little gearbox and it needs to go back on the milling machine. It's sitting over here as soon as possible. Um, you know, got to have... A, Got to have a transmission, right? So the next morning here, I got the uh, transmission unit gearbox installed. Prior to that, I added some, uh, a couple mounting screws, 3816, going through the plate um, from the bottom to hold the entire motor shelf in place. Uh, sealed up the uh, gearbox, put Permatex on the gasket, mounted it, uh, set the flywheel, or set the, uh, the pulleys, um, filled it with oil and I'm gonna fire it up and see what we got uh, speed wise. So let's see if I can set the camera up. I don't know, over here or something like that. Let's see. Something like that. Okay, so got power. <laughs> neutral position disconnected so we can turn the uh, spindle by hand. Uh, there's one here. So, with the four-speed gearbox and the three-speed step pulley, we've got 12 spindle speeds available um, from about 78 RPM up to about 1,740 RPM. And then on the table power feed with this step cone pulley in the back arrangement, we've got four power feeds, or uh, ratios. And then to enable the, the table feed, all you do is you pull this out and it goes. Stop it. You've got stop dogs that hit this, they'll trip it out. Um, or to manually pull it out, all you do is pull the lever here and it disengages the worm wheel. That's it. So happy that we're back up and running.